welcome. Welcome if you're watching this on our YouTube channel and welcome to you if you're listening to this on Red Kite Radio. It's great to welcome you to Stone Church this morning. We're going to be thinking about how we pray and who is worthy to pray. And at the end of it, we know that we are all called to be in God's presence. So we open with a hymn of praise. from Luke chapter 18 and we're going to start at verse 9. Jesus told this story and he told it to those who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, the other was a tax collector. A tax collector, a phrase in the Bible for someone who has no morals and no scruples, regarded as, I don't know, illegitimate within the community. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. And I give away a tenth of everything I earn. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven. But he beat his breast, saying, God, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Jesus said, I tell you, this man, rather than the proud man, 
uh, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humbled themselves will be exalted. Humility, justification, living in shame. The people who have no shame, who feel entitled. Those who feel that they are um, uh, worth something. Whatever anybody else has, they are worth more. They are the people that God suggests are, are not going to be heard in the kingdom of God. Those who come with humility, with, who are shamed. Those who come and bow before God and say, plead with him. Who recognise their failures and their sins. Those are the ones which God accepts. Look around in our world now and you find that those who find entitlement, privilege, they, have, or they seek the honour and the glory are those very people who lead us in the wrong direction. We need to listen to the meek, to those whose voice is very small. We need to listen to all kinds of people in our society. I am a dyslexic person, and one of the things that as I meet with other dyslexic people, one of the things we have in common is not just our inability to spell very well, but a sense of shame. We felt shamed at school that we couldn't do things that everyone else seemed to be easy, find easy. I couldn't even write my name with any neatness. And so when they said, right, write the title at the top, underline it, the date and your name. By the time that I had actually managed to get that without splodging, most people had written two paragraphs. And then I started to write. And I was then ashamed. Why haven't you done more? What is it? Are you stupid? You don't seem to be stupid when you're asked questions in class, but you really are stupid because you can't write this down. That feeling of shame. So when I discovered Jesus, when I discovered that there was somebody, not just in the storybooks, but alive for me, it was my guilt and shame that were removed. And I think that is so important. I actually go into Christian congregations now and I say, oh, I'm dyslexic. And I get five people coming up saying, I've never told anybody this, but I am too. Or you've just described me. I had that experience as well. And it's far more uh, people will say that to me within a Christian congregation than are ever diagnosed as dyslexic in society. They come because Jesus sets them free. So what about you? Why do you come and listen? Why do you watch these videos? I hope it's not because, you know, there's anything impressive about me or about Casa. We hope that you come and you listen because Jesus loves you and accepts you and takes you into his heart. Know that our God is the God of every person, not just the privileged. It is, he is your God and our God. Amen. And so let us pray for the people of this world. Father, we give you thanks for every single person. For those who experience shame, we pray that they will know that you love them. We pray that they know that you are on their side. We pray for those tiny babies uh, in Somalia that are born and after two years they are still weighing four or six pounds. No weight at all. We pray for their mothers calling out for support and we pray for the international community to respond. We pray that vicious bullies who feel that they are entitled to ruin other people's lives, people such as uh, Vladimir Putin or the president of China, that they will be challenged, that they are not in your kingdom because of entitlement, 
But it is the people who have been bombed from their homes, who have run away, who have found a uh, uh, loss in their lives, that you are listening to them. Father, we cry with them and pray to you. Father, hear our prayer. Come and forgive us as sinners. And so we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This has been a very short, very short, but I hope it is really pithy. Just listen to this. God loves you. God is there for you. He forgives us our sins and he sets us on the right path. Before our final hymn, the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. We dwell in him and he in us. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing to him, you peoples, speak of his marvellous works. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen.